Today's webinar revolved around Bluetooth. Bluetooth is quite a, a nice feature in hearing aids, but it's also quite a bugbear for many people because of the technicalities involved. So today I'm just going to try and explain that in simpler terms if possible and hopefully address most of your issues. So we'll start off just looking at the history of Bluetooth hearing aids. We'll also look at the types um, of Bluetooth used in hearing aids. We'll look at the benefits of Bluetooth. We'll look at the limitations of Bluetooth. And we'll look at troubleshooting Bluetooth or common Bluetooth issues. We'll also look at any un unanswered questions I may have missed as I go through this topic. So Bluetooth hearing aids really came to light back in 2014 with Gene Resound with the Lynx hearing aid. And it took that long, even though we've had Bluetooth headsets for years and years, was the battery power challenge. It's just that Bluetooth is very demanding on a battery. A hearing aid needs to operate at least a full day from that battery and several days. And that means you, you can't just take an off-the-shelf Bluetooth solution and stick it in the hearing aid. I actually attended uh, a meeting with Snow and Stefa um, back in 2010, and I asked them the question about Bluetooth. And then Janir told me if they run a standard Bluetooth chip on a hearing aid battery, a cell battery, that battery lasts only 20 minutes, which is obviously not sufficient to um, drive a hearing aid if you had to change batteries every 20 minutes. So that really came to a solution back in 2014 when Apple released its made for iPhone solution, which is a proprietary protocol Apple designed, which is low energy and is licensed to some hearing aid providers with ReSound being the first. And it's quite logical that ReSound were the first because they also own Jabra, which are Bluetooth headsets and other headsets. So they found it quite easy, easy to integrate that technology from their other experience into hearing aids. And over time, more and more manufacturers came to the, the game. Sonova, however, which makes Unitron and Phonak and Hansaton, they decided not to go down the made for iPhone route because that route has several limitations. You totally beholden to Apple with their licensing as to when they update things. And Sonova was really quite innovative as far as connection through their FM systems and remote microphones. So they used that experience to end up building their own Bluetooth chip, which wasn't a low energy chip, it's actually a full Bluetooth capable chip, but can run off a standard hearing aid battery. And they've had several iterations of that over time. And lately we've seen um, Android come on board um, particularly with the made for Android kind of hearing aid, similar to made for Apple. So Nova, which was Bluetooth Classic, could connect to Android and even older phones, but more and more suppliers can now do Android, although there's a, a catch. It's only certain Androids at this stage, so it's not quite as global as a, a Bluetooth Classic solution that Sonova offers. So there's two main, there's a couple of types of Bluetooth hearing aids. The first is Bluetooth low energy, and that's really designed to take as little power as possible from the hearing aid battery, so your battery doesn't run down in unexpected time frames. That's typically your mic made for iPhone, and also the Asha, which is the Android option, which is coming to light these days. And Bluetooth low energy also doesn't only do streaming, it does apps, so things like your remote control apps, remote fitting apps, those sort of things. Phonak, for instance, uses low energy, but its own proprietary streaming protocol for its TV unit, which then doesn't use as much power as Bluetooth Classic. And it's also used when we program hearing aids wirelessly through Bluetooth. So all of them have that low energy option. But then you also have Bluetooth Classic, which really only comes from Sonova, and that was in the, first of all, in the Phonak Direct range, which wasn't great. It could only stream a phone call to one ear and the Moxie All, which had the same limitations. Then we got uh, Marvel and Discover and also the Discover Next, which was the next iteration of it. 
still on an older chip than we currently see in the paradise, could connect one Bluetooth device at a time, had some issues with dropouts, not quite as stable as others, but certainly a step up from the Moxie All and Direct. And then lately we've got the Phonic Paradise, which allows up to eight connections with two active connections, much more stable and again an improvement on the previous generation. So there's generational improvements as well um, with Bluetooth. The benefit of Bluetooth hearing aids are plentiful. I actually use a SEP for phone calls, for listening to audiobooks and podcasts, which I do all day long. I listen to TV on it so the kids can sleep while I'm watching TV. So it's really great. It takes phone calls from being one of the biggest bugbears about hearing aids to being one of the more enjoyable things about hearing aids, actually. They also allow you to connect to television, with typically with the use of a the TV unit, simply because if you connect through Bluetooth through the television, there's typically a delay of two seconds, which means the lips don't sync. So most manufacturers have their own proprietary TV unit that plugs into the back of the TV and streams that straight into the hearing aids, typically in stereo. And that, that's quite an enjoyable feature. You can also stream audio from the phone, which is what I use, so phone calls, any YouTube videos, any podcasts, any audio books, any video, anything that plays sound, which also unfortunately includes notifications if you've got notifications turned on. And then it also allows for the remote control of the hearing aids through an app on the phone, typically a manufacturer-specific app. And it also allows things like remote programming where we can dial in at a specified time, you give us permission to connect, we have a video call, and on that video call we can adjust your hearing aids from the comfort of your home. Bluetooth is also secure because each Bluetooth connection needs to be negotiated. It's pairing as, as the unique key gets given to that pairing and you've got to permit that connection. So it's not like someone can just hack into Bluetooth. And it's also safe. The frequency range of Bluetooth isn't a range that can actually pass through the body. In fact, any water in your body actually stops the Bluetooth from working, which can also lead to some breakups because the Bluetooth's on your head but it means it's not gonna cause you any cancer or any side effects like that, which is obviously very important for something you're gonna wear all day long. It does, however, come with some limitations in that it's very prone to interference, not only from water in your body and water around you, but also it's the, the bandwidth that used 2.4 gigahertz is used by microwaves. It's basically what microwaves exude. Um, Wi-Fi, radios, um, your TV has frequencies in that range. It's a very, very busy spectrum. And how it tries to get past that, it actually frequency hops. So it's changing its frequency slightly every time and that code it shared initially keeps up with that change. But if there's too much noise in that frequency, you can get breakups or the range could be reduced dramatically. So it is prone to that sort of interference, particularly if you've got Wi-Fi close to your TV and that um, got your phone next to your TV or something like that. The range is limited. There's two types of Bluetooth, and the larger the range, the higher the battery power. So the range for hearing aids is 10 meters, although there's some devices that has 100 meter range. But again, we want to be able to operate that hearing aid for at least a full day, if not multiple days, particularly if you're using a cell battery. So they chose a shorter range, which requires less battery power to do so. And it's also line of sight. So if you walk past the wall, that wall can block it. If there's more interference, the range is gonna drop. So a few things play a role. The number of active connections is very much dependent on the memory in the hearing aid. And like any other computer part, memory takes space. And a, computer, a hearing aid chip is a little computer that tiny, a couple of millimeters big. So to be able to support more connections, it needs more memory. And that's, for instance, why the marble range of hearing aids could only have two connections with one active because it didn't have enough memory to support all the connections that the Paradise could, where the Paradise now supports eight connections, two being active. So that, so that also varies between different brands. Typically, you're made for iPhone, are uh, two connections with one being active as well. 
the priority of connections is something that can be quite confusing as well. So, for instance, in the hearing aid itself, if you're watching television and you start playing on your phone and you scroll past something that's a video, your phone's going to take prominence because you also want a photo call to come through rather than the TV streaming. So keep that in mind if you've got Bluetooth on and your phone watching TV and you're scrolling around, your TV might actually drop out because the phone has now taken control of the earphones um, as it sees the hearing aids taking that connection. A similar issue is in the car where the car Bluetooth system takes over the hearing aid Bluetooth system. Firstly, because it might have been paired very first to your phone. Your phone will typically prioritize the first pair device, which is your car, over the second pair device, which is your hearing aid. But it will also prioritize the stronger connection over the weaker connection. And a car has a much stronger radio. So in that case, you might want to turn off Bluetooth in your car. If you want to keep listening to your map directions, etc., do the hearing aids instead, or simply unpair the car and repair it, which will shift it down into a lower priority when you drive. So just understanding those things can solve a lot of issues as well. The other thing that's quite common is when the aids are connected to your phone, it, the phone sees the hearing aids as a set of headphones. So if you've got the headphones on and you've got notifications typically on your iPhone to slide the side on, or in Android, you can go into settings and change it. But it will play any sound that would have played through the phone through the hearing aids. And the effect that has is you get all these beeps and bongs going off in your ears, but also while it's streaming through the hearing aid, the hearing aid shifting from its hearing aid function to its streaming functions, you might actually hear speech drop. And that's typically if a text comes through or you scan through Apple Pay and it pings and you have your notifications on, that will happen. So simply just turn off your notifications, and that will stop happening. Battery life, as I mentioned, is an issue, and that also becomes an issue. Uh, could be different between the two hearing aids. So made for iPhone and Asha hearing aids typically have similar drain on both hearing aids because each hearing aids connect separately. With Phonax solution, you have a master hearing aid, which tends to default to the right hearing aid. If you look at your app, you might see one hearing aid have lower power reserve after a day's use than the other because it's controlling all the Bluetooth and then streaming that signal to the other ear. So it's working a bit harder. So that's pretty common. And the more Bluetooth you use during a day, the less battery life you're going to get. So be aware of that. So if you don't want to use that function, turn off the Bluetooth from your phone and you can extend your battery life. The other big bug there, particularly with Bluetooth Classic, which you find in Fnova, Phonak, and Unitron, is that some phone manufacturers have non-standard implementations. And the biggest culprit with this seems to be Motorola, because it's the most common phone we have problems with where it's not pairing, not pairing consistently, breaking up, not working well, because their interpretation of the Bluetooth standard is different from the, the actual standard which means some phones might work better than others as well, despite it being Bluetooth Classic in that instance. And uh, the same problem comes to light more with the ASHA standard, which is very new. They're both the hardware on the phone, so the, the physical bits of the phone, as well as the software, the operating system, need to be capable of driving that protocol. It doesn't help if you've got the software, but the chip that runs Bluetooth can't handle it. It still won't work. So it makes it quite difficult to decide, is it going to work for me? Isn't it going to work for me? Particularly if you use an Android device. With iPhone, it's simply if you've got an iPhone 5S or above, you're typically fine. And as with anything else, it's not perfect. It was never designed for hearing aids. But saying that, it makes life so much easier just being able to press play on your TV, on your phone, rather than having to find earphones. So it's enjoyable, but it's not a perfect technology. The good thing about that, however, is if your Bluetooth's not working, it doesn't mean your hearing aid's not working. The hearing aid still does what a hearing aid does. It's just you lose an obvious functionality, which can make some people worry a bit, but it's not that your hearing aid's broken or anything like that. 
Okay, so when it comes to troubleshooting, there's a, a few things you can do. A lot of this troubleshooting I'll be going through is similar between different devices, but a common issue is the hearing aid is not pairing to your phone. It might have been paired in the past and you're trying to pair it again, it's not working. Typically that revolves around a few issues. The first is, is there interference? Are you too close to a Wi-Fi router? Are you in a very noisy environment where if you scan for Bluetooth devices, a whole list comes up, as we often see in our offices with several people working in other offices within the building? And has your phone been restarted? Sometimes the phone, being a computer, gets so many apps running and the memory gets corrupt and it's not working properly, things get a little bit skewed. So sometimes all it takes is physically turning off your phone, not just the button that makes it go to sleep, but hold the button so it tells you power off and then turn it back on just to clear memory. So that's typically uh, something to try. The other thing you can try is to go into, if you've previously paired the devices, go into your Bluetooth setting and forget the Bluetooth devices and then simply repair them. Because if something got corrupted, in the, the settings or the connection, it won't work and clearing those will, will inevitably help unless there's an issue of your phone or there could be hardware issues with the phone or the hearing aids. But typically with the hearing aids, it won't be two, it won't be one if that's the case. So it's a little bit of troubleshooting. Not connecting is, is a, a different issue. That means basically you've got a pairing, so the hearing aids are listing that they, but you're not connecting. So you're not getting a streaming signal through or apps stop working. Similar solution here, always make sure you turn your, hear, oh, your phone off and back on. It's worthwhile turning your hearing aids off and back on. It's not something that I need to do very often. It's just once in a blue moon, but that's typically the first step you'll take. The second thing is making sure your hearing aids aren't actively connected to another device. And a lot of the questions I saw were, I can connect to my phone and my iPad, but I've got trouble connecting to my laptop. And it's simply because you can have eight, in paradise, eight connections, but only two active devices. So the other thing is if one is actually streaming, so you're on your phone, say, in a video app, then it's not going to connect to another device. So what you might want to do is just turn off the Bluetooth on the other devices and then try connecting it to the new device or move the other devices away from you, and that can help. And make sure you're fairly close to the device. Turn the hearing aids off and back on. Sometimes it just takes pushing the button, so you switch back to the automatic on Phonak, and it will connect. So again, just being aware of how the technology works can help you troubleshoot it a bit, and that's why I say it's not a perfect technology, although it's a really nice technology. Interference is another common one, and we tend to see that more so with the older technologies, your Marvel, your older made for iPhone devices than the newer ones. Because of each generation, the radio gets improved, the usage of the radio, the protocols get improved. But typically what that results in is the sound crackling, particularly on, on phone calls. That is particularly a problem with iPhone and Bluetooth Classic, which is Sonova, Phonak and Unitron. So if those devices, all you need to do is in the app, change from adaptive protocol to fixed protocol. Adaptive basically means it gives you more bandwidth, so the sound quality improves and reduces as there's room to move it. But iPhone, particularly your 10 and 11, 12, don't deal with that very well. So in that case, just put it on fixed bandwidth and that fixes the issue. Other causes for interference crackling up could be range, I found that particularly with my marbles, not so much with my paradise, going to shopping centers, I have streaming going, walking to a shopping center where there's a lot of Wi-Fi, a lot of fluoro lights and things, everything working in that same frequency, and it would crackle or break up. In those cases, you can physically just move your phone closer to your hearing aids, and that resolves that issue. And that's the same issue with the breaking up. So in that case, particularly if your phone's right in your pocket and it's more an issue of Phonak because of Phonak you've got one master here which is typically the right. So if you've got your phone in your left pocket and you're in a place with a lot of interference, this might break up which then breaks up both hearing aids. We've made for iPhone and Asha it's not such a big issue because each hearing aid has its own low energy, so lower sound quality connection, but it's a little bit more stable for those things which means 
only one gear will break up, but not the other one. If you want to have both working again, just bring the phone more central, sometimes just holding it in your hand, which can help for those sort of things. So be aware of the environment. And that could also be a problem with the TV connectors. So with TV connectors, if you've got it, which we typically would want to do, put your TV connector right underneath the television. Most of the electronics of the TV actually sits right there. So if the electronics from the TV is too close to the connector, there's a lot of radio waves you need to deal with and which can skew the, the sound waves coming or the radio waves coming out and cause connection issues, cause distance issues and cause interference. So simply just move your TV connector away from the TV or a different position, away from a Wi-Fi router, and you should see that improve dramatically. Sound quality very much comes into the interference part as well and breaking up part as well. But yeah, sometimes you, you can get these sort of little interruptions that tend to be temporary. If it's a permanent thing, again, turn off your phone. There could be a bit of distortion or corruption of the protocol that's just causing a bit of an issue there. If it persists, then it might be something wrong with the hearing aid, which we need to look at as well. The range, once again, comes back to this interference, radio wave, everything mixing together. So there, as I mentioned, it's particularly going to come into play with the phone when you're streaming and you're driving past traffic lights or walking in a shopping centre or somewhere where there's a lot of radio interference. In those cases, just move the phone closer to you, move the TV connector, and just be aware of what's going on in your environment as well, because that will affect range. Same thing if I stream audio and I walk to the kitchen, there's a wall, it breaks off as soon as I go past that wall. So you might find if that's something you do consistently, move your TV unit more towards that wall so it can get a little bit further past that wall to help you with that sort of thing as well. Unwanted notifications, as I mentioned, quite a bug there, but a simple one to fix. Just turn off the slider so your um, phone is in its silent mode, or you can go into the settings and turn off notifications for certain things, which will stop the beeping and stop the hearing aid from sort of being quiet as soon as you get a text notification or something like that. Just want to talk about the interference, particularly with Phonak, where other people say they can't hear you. What, what happened there with the marble is that the microphone needs to be very sensitive because it's picking up your voice from the microphone and that's quite a distance from your mouth. So they've got to make that microphone very sensitive, which means if you've got into a lot of noise, you can still hear the other person, but they complain they can't hear you. So in that case, you might just want to move to a quiet environment. That's been improved with the Paradise. They've applied a little bit of technology to it to try and reduce the noise. So it's not quite as bad with the Paradise as it was with Marvel. Again, that's a generational thing. Not particularly an issue with the made for iPhones because they can't use the microphone on the hearing aid, so they're not hands-free. You've still got to use, speak through the hearing aid's microphone itself by holding the phone like this, holding it normally to, to work that. The other complaint I've seen is when you try to use something like the Marvel, or the paradise using Skype. What happens normally when you select on your Bluetooth audio on the computer, you might select Phonak Stereo because that's how you normally stream the laptop into your ears. But when you're using Phonak Stereo, the bandwidth, the amount of data that needs to be shared is, is very large. And it's only a one-way communication. If you use that protocol to do a Skype call, there's not enough data bandwidth, so the pipe's not big enough let all that data through both ways. So it's going to start breaking up and doing all sorts of funny things. So in that case, select the hands-free protocol on your Bluetooth audio, and that should improve it because what it does, it halves that signal width. So half of it's for the sound coming to you and halves it for the microphone going back to the person you're speaking with. The other issue is that tended to come up in the questions revolved around the app particularly Phonak app. I guess there's just a lot of Phonak out there, so it's not that they have more problems, just the more popular hearing aid. But what happens is a lot of people seem to find that going into the app is problematic. Sometimes it doesn't connect. Sometimes it's slow to connect. But the by the time this one person, for instance, wants to change the volume on the, the TV, by the time they get 
this all working, the, the opportunity, the person wanting to speak to them is gone or the ads are finished or, or whatever. The app is really not designed. Yes, it's a remote control, but it's it's would only really work if that was open all the time, which isn't practical. I simply use the, the buttons on the hearing aid. So you can simply push the down button. When it's streaming the signal, it knows. Pushing down means you want the streaming signal softer, but the microphones, which is picking up the voice around you, louder. So that's a simple way of doing it, and you can turn it back up there, and that's instant. You don't need to fiddle for a phone. You can use either ear and push it there just as long as the buttons are active in your hearing aids, and that's typically the default, but it might have been turned off for whatever reason. The similar issue comes in with muting the TV when you want to speak to someone. Again, finding the app or getting that muted when the wife or someone wants to come in to speak with you, it's quite simply really easy. All you do is you push and hold any of the buttons, whether it's loud or softer, for about three seconds. The hearing aid will go do 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 and it will be in microphone mode. So you can have a conversation. When you want to go back to it, just push and hold again. It will go beep, and the streaming will continue. If you don't like the hearing aids connecting to the TV connector automatically, it's a setting we can change. We can actually say automatically connect or manually connect, which means even if you've got the TV on, if you want to listen to it, you've got to push and hold the button um, to connect, and then everything works the same. So that's just a preference setting that can be changed. One person just mentioned they lost a, a function in the Phonak app where they could control the relative volume of the outside noise versus the noise being streamed in the hearing aid. It's just been moved. So if you look at the Phonak app, at the bottom right, there's three little lines. While, whilst you're streaming, and it will only show up when you're actually streaming audio, if you click on that, it will pop to that screen as before. Um, certainly contact us and we can show that to you if, you if I wasn't clear on how that works. The other question that came in is when you're on a phone call or this particular person, I believe they wanted to play some music on a Bluetooth speaker while the hearing aids connected to their phone and they couldn't do it. They're hearing the music, so they had to take off the hearing aids, turn them off, try and connect to the speaker. When you're streaming a, an audio signal, if you swipe down on your phone from the top right corner, you'll see a little play box with the play button on there. At the very top right, there's a little blue circle. If you click on that, you can select your audio source. So you can go from hearing aids to phone or your Bluetooth speaker if they're connected to your phone. And you can change source there while you're streaming without having to do all that. So again, that's something we can show you if you need a bit of assistance there. And then last question was the tap control of phone app. So the Paradise has a, a nifty feature where if you get a phone call, you can simply double tap on your ear to answer. Um, but it can get annoying, particularly when you wear glasses, I've turned mine off, because as soon as you click the glasses, the, the hearing aid might mute or it might start streaming or stop streaming or, or whatever is interpreting that movement as a tap. There's two ways past it. The first is your audiologist through their software can train the tap to be a little bit less sensitive. So just after you tap your ear a couple of times, so that might help. But also in the Phonak, my Phonak app, um, if you go to the menu options, you can actually turn off and turn on tap control as you can also turn on that fixed bandwidth or adaptive bandwidth issue as well. So that's in your Phonak app. Just look at the menus and you'll find it then. Turn it on and off as you choose.